Apple, one of the bright spots in what's been a dismal earnings season over in the U.S., but can it repeat that performance? Brian Ma of IDC joins Tony and me just around the table. Uh, what should investors really be looking at? Uh, recurring profits, that seems to be a common theme that really boils down to whether this kind of uh, performance can be repeated. Yeah, and the one thing to keep in mind is the earnings that we saw in this past week have been, a lot of it is coming from iPhone. Right? Mm. It's more than half of their revenue is coming from that. Is that, that. dangerous? It, well, yes and no. Um, it, they, you know, there certainly is a lot of momentum that will still be coming through with the iPhone in the next year or two, and that's certainly good. The question is when you start looking further out, three, five, ten years down the line, you know, as smartphones get fully saturated and so forth, what are the other kind of hits that Apple's going to be pulling out of their pocket to say, hey, you know what, we're still on the cutting edge. We're still the one that can command these high premiums and, you know, get these big margins. Uh, Adam, who we spoke to earlier, was saying that uh, the drag that we saw from the iPad, that's nothing because once they innovate, they're going to get the same momentum going and boom, it's, it's a phenomenal growth company. Do you agree? Yeah, yeah. I mean, and again, um, you know, it's not just about iPhone. Some of it, iPad, there is some potential with the partnership that they're doing with IBM. They could pick up a bit around enterprise, depending on what they do with the iPad. But in the grand scheme of things, it is still a case where uh, you know, everything that they've got, iPhone, the music content, and all the, not even just music, right, all the various content that they're selling through the store, um, you know, and the potential of watch and Apple Pay are the mm. things to watch for them as mm. catalysts going ahead. Seems to me that Apple in China is more for kind of that uh, mid-30s and older people with money and that Xiaomi is more for the young demographic and that's really where it's growing. So the question is, is that the case? Yeah. In China, what you look at in terms of that Apple demographic is very much that tier one to three cities, you know, the larger cities in China, generally towards the east coast of China, mm -hmm. typically more wealthier, uh, a little bit older, I guess. And then when you look at Xiaomi, it is that younger generation, maybe some of those that could not afford an Apple phone, but none nonetheless still aspire to an Apple phone. Mm -hmm. So in fact, you could argue that Xiaomi indirectly can help feed Apple in mm -hmm. later years as some of these, you know, Xiaomi fans graduate. Uh, up to Apple. But again, I think for now, you know, and, and to your earlier question about Southeast Asia, yes, we do see similar trends as we go out to other countries, right? Apple always has commanded that kind of a premium segment. Xiaomi has been those that tend to go for more of a younger demographic, mm -hmm. but a fiercely loyal younger mm -hmm. demographic at, right. at that. So that's where we'll start to see, you know, similar trends coming out in these other countries. But can they continue to have gross margins of something close to 40 percent, especially as their product ranges yeah. get far, get more diverse? Yeah, you know, there certainly is pressure, um, particularly in the U.S. as operators in the U.S. are starting to cut back on phone subsidies, right? One of the reasons why Apple can command those kind of margins is because in the U.S. their selling prices are kind of hidden by the fact that you can get a phone at a lower price, mm -hmm. in some cases near free as long as you sign up for a contract, right? So as operators in the U.S. start to cut back on some of that activity, there's going to be more exposure, if you will, to what the true price of an mm -hmm. iPhone is. Mm -hmm. uh, and that can be a problem. But nonetheless, I would argue that, you know, Apple is still so ahead of the curve. Apple still creates such desirable products mm -hmm. that in the, for now at least, they can still, you know, I, I brush it, that concern aside, in other words. It's still going to be a case where Apple is going to be able to, yes, they will be able to command that premium. I want. Are ahead. you excited about that? I am excited, but it is still very, very early days for that, right? The usage model and the interface, there's so many unresolved questions. Mm -hmm. Battery life is a huge thing around it ah. as well, too. There definitely is potential around it, but, you know, these kind of little, the, they're not even little things, these kind of big questions still <laughs> need to be resolved. And I do think there is potential when you start thinking about how Apple Watch and Apple Pay can work together, oh, right? Wow. You think about how you pay with just a watch, you don't need your phone anymore, that gets kind of interesting.